Let's take a look at uh, slope. <clears throat> now we have a line. And it's going going like that. Well, it's got a, a certain uh, steepness that goes goes at. Excuse me. This is referred to as slope. And uh, let me try to write that a little bit more legible. <laughs> Sun was in my eyes. That's why I couldn't write that. Okay, there we go. And slope is represented by little m. And it's the change in y over a change in x. Now, some uh, instructors will teach us is rise and run and so forth. Um, I don't like that form. I like the I like this better. Um, realize that slope is a rate of change, and you can put anything in here. Uh, change in profit over change in time. Uh, change in finances over change in time. Change in miles over change in time. Miles per gallon. Um, change in miles over change in gallons. Um, so you can put anything in here. Um, now, taking that into account, all we're going to be looking at is X's and Y's, but it's much more than that. A huge part of calculus is studying this right here. Um, now, if you're um, given two points, X1 and Y1, and X2 and Y2, then your slope, there's a formula, your slope is Y2 minus Y1, over x2 minus x1. <clears throat> now, if I were to draw the line between uh, between two points, so we're given two points, like what we're given right here, and draw a line through them, if it's going up like that, then m is positive. It's increasing from left to right. If I were to connect two points, it goes like that then M is negative. It's decreasing. Now if I have um, this right here where it's a vertical line. Now if you remember this from before, a uh, vertical line is when you got X is equal to a number, like X is equal to 3 or X is equal to 4. When you got a vertical line, M is undefined. And if you got um, two points and you draw a line between them, and it's straight across, a horizontal line. This is of the form y is equal to a number, like y is equal to 2 or y is equal to 3. In that case, m is equal to 0. Let's look at a problem. And this is at 4-1. right there. And then uh, negative 2, negative 4. 2, 3, 4. Like that. And um, lines through them. And it says find the slope of the line whose graph is given. Well remember, slope is the change in y over the change in X. So change in Y over change in X. So if we start with one of the slopes, let's start with this one up here. And change in Y. So we're going we're gonna to try to move from this point and get to the other point. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five down. down five and then from that place right there we're counting our tick marks we we'll go one two three four five six over so one two three four five six so left left six
and um, there we go. Got a bug in my room. <laughs> I was trying to kill it. <laughs> you will die, bug. I'm not sure where you went to. Now down five. What that is is negative five. If you go down, it's negative. If you go left, it's negative. So this would be negative six. So our answer would be five six. Okay, let's look at it another way. Instead of um, starting there and going down, let's start um, right here. And we're going to go up and, and to the right. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I went up 5. And then I'm going to go um, right. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right. So I'll go right 6. Okay, now if we're going up, that means it's positive. So this will be a positive 5. And if we're going right, then that's positive. So we've got a positive 6, which would also give us 5, 6. So again, if you're going if you're going down it's negative if you're going left it's negative if you're going up it's positive and if you're going right it's positive now you notice it doesn't matter which which point we start at uh, we end up with the same slope so that would be your answer it's five six <coughs> excuse me Okay, this says plot the points in a rectangular coordinate system. You can do that if you want, if you're not comfortable with plotting points. Draw a line through them, and it says find, interpret the slope of the line. We're just going to find it. You know, interpret it, you know, if it's increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, you know, and so forth. Well, if given two points, this is x1, and this is y1, and this is x2, and this is y2. And our slope is given by this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. <coughs> it's a good idea to go through and replace your variables with sets of parentheses. This is your first step. And then we'll plug in our values. y2 is negative 7. y1 is 5. x2 is negative 5. And x1 is 3. Well, negative 7, negative 5 um, gives us negative 12. Negative 5, negative 3 is negative 8. Now, negative divided by negative becomes positive, so those negatives cancel. And top and bottom here are both divisible by 4, so that gives us 3 halves. And that's our answer. <coughs> Excuse me. Grab a drink. Of course, it's positive, which means it's increasing um, from left to right. Let's look at our second our next example. <clears throat> so we got negative 2 and negative 4 and 6 and 10. <clears throat> well, let me label these. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. And our formula for a slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You'll find that whenever you're using a formula in math, if you write it down every time you use it, it'll help cement that in. and It'll just become second, second uh, nature to you. Now it's especially handy if you mess up on signs to go ahead and replace your variables with parentheses first and then plug in your numbers. Now we said y2 was 10, y1 is negative 4, x2 is 6, and x1 is negative 2. Now here we got a negative parentheses negative, that becomes a positive, so we got 10 plus 4. And down here we got a negative parentheses negative, that becomes positive, so we got 6 plus 2. And that gives us 14 over 8. And both those are divisible by 2, um, so 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. There we go. 
And that's your answer. <coughs> Let's take a look at this. <coughs> Excuse me. Got one half, negative one third, and five halves, and negative two thirds. And the same instructions, find the slope. Well, this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. Our formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'll go through and put parentheses where my variables are. Then I'll plug in my values. We said y2 is uh, negative 2 thirds. y1 is negative 1 third. x2 is 5 halves and x1 is 1 half. Well here we got a negative parentheses negative that becomes positive so we got negative 2 thirds plus 1 third. And here we got 5 halves minus 1 half. Now the top part has the same denominator, so I can combine together the top, the top of uh, the numerators. Uh, negative two plus one gives us negative one third. The bottom part has the uh, same denominator, so I can combine together the top parts. Five minus one gives us four halves, which gives us negative one third, and four divided by two is two. Now there's nothing special here. We're going to see later on how to solve these, but uh, how to simplify them. Um, but here we have a negative one-third divided by two. Well, if we're going to divide fractions, they both should be fractions. So I'll rewrite the two as two over one. Remember, we never actually divide. We re immediately rewrite it as multiplication. So I'm going to take the um, two over one and rewrite it as one-half. Now we multiply the top parts together. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And the bottom parts, 3 times 2, gives us 6. So that would be our slope. <coughs> now let's remember our oddball cases. I'm going to do it with uh, an example. x equals 3. We've already said x equals a number is a vertical line at that number. So that would be a vertical line at 3. Now if I look at any point on this on this uh, line, it'll be of this form, 3 and then some kind of y value. The x part will always be 3, no matter what. So if you're actually given uh, two points, like some of these uh, problems we just did, where you're given like this right here, it's one of our oddball cases. Since the x values match, it's automatically the equation is x is equal to 3, it's a vertical line, and your slope, remember, is undefined. Now, if you got y is equal to 2, remember the graph of that is a horizontal line at 2. So it looks like that. m is equal to 0, of course. The key part here is I don't know what the x value is going to be, but I know what the y value is. It's 2. It's always 2. And again, if I had another point, it would be something here, and we'd have 2 here. So the x values can be anything, but y is always 2, or whatever value, whatever number you have. Well, let's take a look at some uh, examples using these. Looks <coughs> like this is a vertical line through negative 1. Well, remember what a vertical line is. A vertical line is x equals a number. And it's x equals whatever number it passes through. So it passes through negative 1 like that. Now specifically here they're asking us to find a slope. Well, the slope of a vertical line is undefined. So that would be our answer. M is undefined. <coughs> okay. We're given um, negative 4 in 2 and negative 4 and 5. Now I'm going to go through the steps on this, but first I want to talk about the shortcut. Look at these points here. You see anything uh, unusual about them? 
the x parts are the same, aren't they? They're both negative 4, which means this equation is x equals negative 4. Because the x values are the same, it's x equals whatever that number is. If the y values were the same, like if this was 2 and this was 2, we'd have y is equal to 2. Now remember, for x equals a number, it's a vertical line at that number, so m is going to be undefined. But let's plug this into our formula and see what we, what we get and y would be undefined. So this is our x1, this is our y1, this is x2, and this is y2. Remember our formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Before you plug in your numbers, you should put parentheses where your variables are. There's that bug. Uh, I ain't got escaped again. Freed's gonna get my drink. <laughs> That's what I'm even worrying about. Okay, so y2 is 5. Got a lid on it. It's a pop from Casey's. And y1 is 2. x2 is negative 4, and x1 is negative 4. Well, up on top, 5 minus 2 is 3. And down below, we got a negative parentheses negative. That becomes a positive. So this becomes negative 4 plus 4. And negative 4 plus 4 gives us 0. Well, any time you have a 0 in denominator, that's undefined. So if you go through the, if you don't notice that it's one of the oddball cases, if you go through the steps, you're going you're gonna to see that it's undefined. And that would be your answer. Let me, uh... Change my seating pattern here. There we go. And let's look at our next problem. This is a problem getting us used to uh, what the slope is used for. Okay. It says, draw a graph of the line that contains a given point and has a given slope. Well, we want to write the slope in the fraction form. So this would be 2 over 1. Now remember, this is the change in y over the change in x. If um, our, our y is up and down, if it's a positive 2, then that means up 2. If it's a negative 2, it would be down 2. Now this is our change in x. And if it's a positive number, it's right. So this means right 1. And now if it was a negative 1, we would go left 1. So on this, this problem, what we're going to do is we're going put, to go put a dot at this, this point. So negative 2, 4. And we'll put a dot there. Now from that dot, we're going to use our slope to get our second point. That says we're going to go up 2 and right 1. So up 2, again from this point, I'm going to go up 2 and right 1, and that's where we put our second dot. Now after you get your second dot, you draw a line through them, and that would be your graph. Again, they're just kind of getting used to what the slope um, is used for, what it represents and so forth. Let's take a look at another one. we got 1, negative 2 and m is equal to 4 thirds. Well again we want our slope to be in um, a fraction form and it is and this is y and this is x, changing y over changing x. Now this is a positive 4 which means we're going to go up 4. If it was a negative 4 we'd go down 4. Well this is a positive 3 which means we'll go right 3. If it was a negative 3 we'd go left 3. So let's go put this point on here. So we got um, 1, negative 2, which would be right here. Now from there, we're going to use our slope to get our second point. So that says we go up 4, right 3. So I'll go up 4. So I'll go up 4 units, and I'll go right 3. And that's where I put my second dot. And after you get both dots, you draw a line through them. And that would be your answer. And I believe that's the end of the section, too, it is.